Hey everyone, this is your boy Bryce. And this is your boy Isaac. And we are Brothers on Tennis. And we are just excited to come back to you today and to start talking about some of the lead up matches to the most traditional, the most prestigious, the biggest tennis tournament of the year, Wimbledon. Wimbledon. And I know last week there was some. <laughs> I hear you, Isaac. <laughs> um, I know last week we had some really good lead up matches. And so, Isaac, tell us a little bit about what happened on the women's side. Yeah, yeah. Folks was excited. They were excited to be on grass. We had the two ladies tournaments. We had uh, Mallorca and we had the Birmingham tournament. And I mean, both of them were, they, they were trying to style up, right? So, I mean, the ladies was, they were getting into it, right? The second we go grass and they're like, all right, we got our footing. We think we're going to try and do some things. <laughs> so it was really good, man. A lot of really good tennis was played. Um, just a couple of things that I, I definitely want to mention. I know that we talked about um, the, the matchup between Benchich and An Anna Samova and how interesting that would be. And unfortunately, Anna Samova took that smack, smack down, um, ended up getting two hoe biscuits, 6-2, uh, 6, -two, six -two. Um, So uh, that was kind of a beat down. And uh, I was expecting it to be a little bit more competitive, but who knows, maybe she was tired or maybe just Benches was, was, was on on the day. But um, yeah, she, she gave it a beat down on that one. Did you, did you have any, uh, did you watch that match, by the way, Bryce? I didn't actually watch that match, but, you know, just my general thought on that mm -hmm. is that we have to remember that Anna Samova is still a very young pro. Yes. And because she went so deep in the French Open, making it to the semifinals, this is a lot of tennis she's playing. And I know she's young and she should be able to snap back probably a little quicker than some of the veterans. But Belinda Bencic is nothing to play with. I mean, she is a very good player, and she can beat any player on her best day. Um, so that was a, that was going to be a tough out for her, and, and Belinda showed her who was queen on that day. Yes, she did. I mean, Belinda was like, you know what, youngster? You're not ready just yet. <laughs> <laughs> but still, good showing on Anna Samova's part. And again, kudos to Bencic, because Bencic actually made the finals of that event. Uh, she ended up taking on uh, uh, Sonia Kennan. I guess she she wants to go by Sonia versus Sophia Kennan. Um, so that was the uh, final there, and uh, it turned out to be a good match. But even before that, uh, we also have to um, kind of talk a little bit about how uh, Miss Angie Curver put that smack down on Maria Sharapova in the second round. <laughs> she I, I, did. She said... <laughs> She told Maria, she said, you're not all the way back yet. No, <laughs> you're not. You're not ready I'm going to take moment. advantage of you right now. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I mean, she just she just really put it on Maria something awful. And, and I felt kind of bad for her, but at the same time, I didn't. Um, but kudos to Angie Kerber <laughs> for doing her thing. But you, oh, go but ahead, you know Bryce. what? I was really impressed with Benchich taking out Kerber, though. I know. What is that a good match? I don't. I don't think she had ever beaten Kerber before that. Right. Yeah. And I, I agree with and that. And so, yeah. And she took a whole biscuit in the first set with that 6 2 loss. But, you know, coming back 7 6 6 4 in the second and the third set, I'm telling you what, bitch, she is, she's truly a top tenner I agree. to me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I think that she gets motivated. She's from Switzerland, for those uh, listeners that don't know this. So she has to be very, very motivated. She's played with Roger Federer before at the uh, Hopman Cup. Uh, you got Stan in there. That's a, also a motivating factor. So I think Ben just has a lot to, to truly live up to, as well as Martina Hingis. Let's not forget, she, she's you know coming exactly. behind the shadows of Martina Hingis. Uh, Molitor, who was um, Hingis' mom, was her coach for one spell. So she's been set up for 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 really good success. She's unfortunately be, been injured over the last few years, but it looks as though she's really getting her game back together. And, and like you said, I believe heartedly that she will be in the top 10 and will be cemented there. I, I see her being there uh, for a good while, along with uh, some of the other younger younger females. So, yeah, good good on benches uh, for, for once again 
um, taking out Kerber and making it into that final. But unfortunately for her, she just didn't have enough to get her over the finish line. Uh, she ended up losing the final to Sophia Kennan, or Sonia Kennan, excuse me. Um, first set was a tiebreaker uh, that she actually won. And she was actually up, I believe, uh, in the tiebreaker for the second set. But Kennan came back and stole it and ended up taking that third set 6-4. So a very, very competitive final on both of their parts. But it just didn't seem like he had enough to get past uh, past Sonia. So any observations on that, Bryce? I, well, I, I was really disappointed in Vincent in that final match. Uh, number one, because I've already told the, the listening audience... <laughs> Early on, I'm not a big fan of Sophia Kennan or Sonya Kennan or, or whatever she wants to go by. <laughs> um, you know, she, I don't care for her swagger on the court. Um, there's just something about the way she carries herself on the tennis court that is not enjoyable for me to watch. I understand she's an American. I understand she's young and all that. But, hey, I'm like anybody else. I have the opportunity to say who I like <laughs> and who I don't necessarily like. That's right. And Kenan is not starting off, you know, that well, in my opinion, in terms of me enjoying watching her as a tennis player, right? Now, Benchich, the, the problem where I became very disappointed in her in the final is that after winning that first set in the tiebreaker, she actually served for the second set up 5-3, I believe. Okay. Uh, those are the type of matches that if you are a top 10 player, you have to close those out. You can't be up a set and a break serving for it, and you lose that. You know, I have to give Ken and her props. She's a fighter, and she stayed in there, and she gave herself a chance to win, and she did just that. But that loss had to sting a little bit to Vincent, and I really wish she had pulled that match out. Yeah, and Bryce, did you happen to see uh, sometime, I guess, during the second set, which is sort of weird, she had won the first set, and somehow or another, she got so frustrated that she was actually crying. Um, I don't know what that was all about, but I thought that that was very interesting that you would be so emotional. And maybe that was the first set. Maybe I'm wrong, because I think she got ahead or she got a lead, and then Kenan came back, and I think she got so frustrated that she was literally crying. In, in the chair during one of the changeovers. And in my opinion, like I said, I understand you have emotions, but you shouldn't let it get that deep on you that you're, you know, no. crying and frustrated. I mean, yeah. No. Can, uh, yeah. And that may, yeah, and that may be part of the reason why she lost too, because there is no room for crying on the tennis court. I know <laughs> you're going to have people out there that are going to be like, oh, you know, she's really invested in it. And the mo no. no, you did not see. <laughs> A lot of your big champion in the past crying on the court. There's no place for that. She needs to go out there and get the job done, or she needs to find her place outside the top ten. So um, I don't know what was going on with her, and, and, and I apologize if I'm being insensitive. There was something off the court that was bothering her. But, uh, no, she but needed to be focused in that final, and she needed to take Kenan out. Exactly. And even with the even with distractions, I mean, you have to be a professional and you have to just kind of push all that aside and, 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 and play. I mean, like I said, you you in the final, you, you need to have your jar of Vaseline out. You need to pull off them earrings and you need to be throwing Hail Marys. I mean, you can't just be sitting up there trying, you know, crying and, 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 and being all like that. No, I did not think that that was a good look for her at all. But at the same time, I do still believe in her. I think she's got great talent. And like I said, she made a final, and I see her really, really continuing to have a great 2019. So um, so kudos to her for making the final, and kudos to Sonia Kennan for taking that title, first title on grass. So it uh, looks like this is becoming more, uh, more um, uh, habit-forming for her uh, to win these titles. So good on you, Miss Kennan. And uh, Bryce, any, any closing remarks on that, uh, on that Mario Kart tournament? Not really on the tournament, but just I will continue to say I am impressed by the new talent we have uh, on the women's side from the USA. We are very deep. There are a lot of really good young women out there, and Kenan is just one of probably about eight 
that I can name right now that have a very, very bright future. So go USA. That's right. That's right. That's right. Good observation. And thank you for saying that because I absolutely am in agreement. I think we look good on the ladies' side going forward. Um, so jumping over to Birmingham. Now, this is where the tournament where our queen, Venus Williams, was in the draw. And um, I really want to kind of talk about that match that she played against Barty Bryce. Um, there were just some things that I saw that, if I'm being honest with you, they had me a little bit concerned. Um, v was doing well. She got up 4-1 in the first set. And, and even though she was up 4-1, she just kind of looked tired, in my opinion. And I don't know... I don't know why I sensed that, but it just didn't seem like she had full energy. And but she got up, and and I it it felt to me like Barty's whole game plan was I'm just gonna tire her out. I'm just gonna kind of make her run, and eventually, you know, her game is gonna fall off, and and you know, I'm gonna do my thing. And it seemed like that was the case. I mean, unfortunately, she was up four one, and then just lost like five games in a row. And it's like Venus, what's what's going on with you, baby? So that one kind of hurt my heart a little bit, but I'm going to pass it over to you. I'll let you comment. Well, and <laughs> and as we've stated, Venus is our favorite. So before I make my comments, I love Venus Williams. <laughs> but I don't know why, Isaac, you're acting like this is something new. I mean, <laughs> Venus either starts off a match really slow and then has to take it to a tiebreaker in the third set to win. Right. Or she gets out to a big lead and she lets it dissipate, right? So, I, and I want to I want to go back before the Barty match because I was encouraged by Venus in terms of I felt like she had two re really good wins before she got to Barty, and she took the the lady that she beat in the round before Wang, yeah. who was the number six seed, she beat her very handily. She beat her six three six two. Right now. The one thing that I'm going to say that makes me feel still a little optimistic with Venus is that Barty is going to be one of the better grass court playing women that she's going to face, right? Agreed. So if there's anyone that I'm going to want her not to have to play in Wimbledon or I'm going to hope that it's not until the finals, it's going to be Ash Barty because I think by the mere fact that they're on grass, Venus typically is going to have the better game over most players in the field. But Barty is one of those ones where she's going to need to be on her game and she's going to need to be on her game the entire match to win because mm -hmm. as we were saying in last week's episode, Ash Barty's confidence has to be sky high right now. Right. Sky high! <laughs> if, if I have any uh, uh, Goody Mob and Outcast fans out there. But... Um, <laughs> You know, it's real high. So she's not going to just lose a match um, that she really shouldn't lose. And her confidence is going to be high enough for her to compete with someone like a Venus or a Serena or a Kvitova or a Muguruza on grass. So would I like to have seen Venus pull that match out? Absolutely. But as I think about her getting some, first of all, she typically doesn't even play. A warm up match, a warm up tournament, right? So, having come and played Birmingham, having played one round of doubles, having had two really solid straight set wins, and then losing to, well, you might as well say the number one player in the world. Yeah, absolutely. I, 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 I was okay with that. She, you know, that I felt like that gave her enough uh, of a boost uh, going into Wimbledon. You know, and I can appreciate that position. I, 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 I guess for me, I, I just, there was just an, a level of energy that I just didn't see in that match. And that to me was the most concerning. And I'm hoping that, you know, maybe it was just the fact that, like you said, she played a, a doubles match. She played two really good singles matches. She was playing the now number one player in the world that, that, that really kind of didn't allow her to show her full, her full, you know, energy and capacity. Um, so hopefully going into Wimbledon, you know, she'll have enough days off here. She's off this week. Um, so going in, and, and, and my hope is that she's going to have a favorable draw so that she can really get in there and, and do some damage. Because I, I, I really, really want to see Venus um, just do well and, and really try and contend 
for this Grand Slam. Not just not just get out there and right. play, but literally contend. Because I still feel in my heart of hearts that she's got the game to get another W at the at Wimbledon. Um, and and I'm just hoping I, that she can make that happen. But go ahead, Bryce. I totally agree. I definitely agree with that. And I'm gonna just add one more uh, piece of data here. I've been reading some of her social media on Twitter and on Instagram, and she really does seem to be in good spirits. So um, she just broke up with her boyfriend of two years, that Nikki Hammond guy. And uh, yeah, and so she seems to be in good spirits and she, and I I don't understand this, and and we'll probably talk about this a little bit more later, due to what our hot topic is. Yeah. But on I think it was Instagram, she had a picture of her and I I couldn't tell if that was her coach or her trainer. And she had a hashtag Wimbledon mixed double wildcard. And I don't know if that means she is going to be playing mixed doubles with him. Hmm. Or just that she was open to playing mixed doubles with someone. It was just a little confusing to me uh, that she had that hashtag and he was in the picture, although she was talking about other things as well, about how he really helps her get ready for the tournaments and they were getting ready to have some rest and relaxation before Wimbledon. And um, But, you know, her head seems to be where it should be going into Wimbledon, and that's probably the most important thing. You're absolutely right. That is just yeah. As long as her mind and her mental are right, then then that to me is 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 really where she she needs to be going into this Grand Slam. So, right on Venus, right on. So I'll go ahead and just kind of wrap up the uh, Birmingham tournament. So again, uh, in the finals, we ended up having Ash Barty, who was playing actually against her uh, doubles player. Uh, she was actually entered in doubles uh, for this tournament with uh, Julia Gerges, and um, they both decided um, when they got or reached, uh, you know, the the semis, I believe it was, that they would they would uh, pull out of the doubles in order to focus on um, really showing up and, and 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 competing well in the finals. So they both pulled out and then they played one another, and I have to say it was a it was a really really good match, Bryce. I mean, you know, Gerges was. She's got a great game, big serve, big forehand, um, played very well, but she just couldn't get past uh, Ash's variety. And I think Ash could contend with her on that serve as well as that forehand. And it ended up being a straight sets win for the, again, now number one player in the world. So any insights on that match? Well, I think you wrapped it up well, but I want to go back a little earlier in the tournament just to kind of reinforce something for our listeners that I put out there in the universe. And that was... <laughs> I know where you're going. I know where you're going. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about the now X number one player in the world, and that is Naomi Osaka. First of all, if Sakari had really taken care of business, she would have knocked Osaka out in the first round. But Osaka got past that match. But Putin Seva, or Putin Seva, uh, however yeah. you say, how do you say her name? I, yeah, that's right, Putin Seva. You got it. Putin Seva? Okay, yeah. I, I wasn't sure. Putin Seva was like, trick, you ain't getting past me. <laughs> so um, <laughs> she took out Osaka 6'2, six, 6'3 six, in the very next round. And, and I just want to reiterate what I said in the past. Look. Osaka is a very good player, and she has loads of talent, and we have to remember that she's young as well. A lot of players who have not grown up playing on either clay or grass, they sometimes need a little bit of time to, you know, develop their games on those surfaces. And Osaka just right now is not ready to compete on grass. Maybe two or three years from now, she'll be a beast on grass, but because she does have the big serves, she, she does have the big ground strokes. But what I'm seeing from her right now is that she simply is not comfortable moving on the surface. And if your movement ain't right, your game ain't going to be right. And so, like I was saying before, how she wasn't going to win Wimbledon, there was an implication that she wasn't going to win anything else on grass either <laughs> uh, <laughs> before Wimbledon. So... She lost in the second round. I, I totally expected that. 
But in the finals, we thought that it was going to either be Barty or Venus. It would be the winner of that match, really. Barty made it there. And actually, when Barty made it to the finals, because she is such good friends with uh, Gorgas, because that is her doubles partner, because she is really the better player and the higher ranked player, I fully expected her to win the final like she did. Yeah. So kudos to you, Ash Barty, for winning yet another tournament, as well as gaining the number one ranking in the world. That is fantastic. I think they said that she was the first uh, since what, Yvonne Gulligong? Gulligong? to uh, take yes. number one, yes. and that is wonderful. That's our Aborigine right there. So, you know, kudos, kudos to you, Ash Barty. And uh, we we at Brothers on Tennis just say congratulations and keep it up, keep it up, fight. <laughs> fight and hold Absolutely. on. Absolutely. We, we like you. <laughs> <laughs> and what I will say to uh, Miss Osaka, oh, go ahead, Bryce. I was just going to say what I will say to Osaka is, I still believe in you. I still believe you are going to have a very, very strong Wimbledon. And don't prove me wrong. Back over to you, Bryce. <laughs> All I'm going to say is Venus Williams will most likely be unseated and keep your head on a swivel when they pull that draw. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. So let's talk about the men because the men last week had an equally exciting week. And we're going to start with the tournament that was in Halle, Germany, where we had the king, Mr. Roger Federer. And yes, he did. He won his 10th title at this tournament, joining the ranks of Rafael Nadal as the only other man in the open era to win double digit titles at the same tournament. So uh, we expected this, we predicted this last week. We, we looked at the draw and we felt like there was nobody in this tournament that was going to beat Roger on grass. But I want to call out Roger's first couple of rounds. In the first round, he played John Millman, who previously had beaten him at the uh, U.S. Open. So there was a little revenge he needed to get there, and he got it 7 6, six 3 in the first round. Then in the second round, he had to face my guy, Joe Willie Sanga. And Sanga had beaten them the last time they had played on grass, actually at Wimbledon. Roger, I believe, was up two sets to none. And Sanga came back and won the last three sets to take the match. So they had an excellent match that went 7 6, 4 6, 7 5. Um, and so he got a little revenge on Joe Willie as well. But then he kind of kicked it in the gear and took out Batista Agu, and then he met Herbert, where I want to remind the listeners, again, I predicted last week that Herbert was going to take out Court. Now, Court actually retired out of their match. He lost the first set 7-5 and then retired, but I'm still taking the credit for calling that win. I didn't care whether it was a retire or forfeit or he just got beat. He was going to meet Federer in the semifinals. So, and, and then the last thing that I want to call out, because remember we had stated that the bottom half of the draw really wasn't as exciting. You know, Isaac, you had your guy hatching off meet Baratonini and Baratonini. I did take him out. And, and I think you actually predicted that. Um, but also, the surprise of the tournament to me really was that GoFan made it to the semifinals. Now, what was not a surprise was who he beat to get to the semifinals, <laughs> and that was Alexander Zverev. Listeners, look, if we're not building credibility with you now, we really should be because we're calling these matches right. <laughs> Zverev wasn't going to win nothing. And he played Gofan, and Gofan said, you know what, I've been watching you all year, and I ain't scared of you not one bit. <laughs> and so he took him out and, and, and really played a very good match to take out Berrettinini to meet Roger Federer in the finals. So, Isaac, how were you feeling about that tournament last week? You know, I thought it was a really, really interesting tournament. I mean, going back to the match with uh, Roger and, and Joe Wilfried, let's be clear. Roger got very, very lucky in that match. 
because Joe very easily could have taken that match. I think that that was something, that was to me a turning point because Joe was playing Federer, he was playing him strong. And that to me was the match of the tournament. I mean, just back and forth, back and forth. And you really could not tell who was going to take that match. Um, so I was really happy for Joe. Bodes well for him, especially going into Wimbledon. I pray to God he's not on Roger's side of the draw. Because if he is and it's best out of five, I just don't know. Because like I said, he played Roger well. That was a fantastic match. And I'm really happy, though, of course, that Roger made it through and that our prediction came true. Roger's got the double digits. Uh, but good on you, Joe Wilfrey, for playing a really, really good, good tournament. So I was most proud of Joe just for his showing. And, you know, the bottom half, like you said, I was definitely surprised with, with Gofan making it. And, and uh, But you know what? He's been a top 10 player before. And I think it's, it, you know, they were talking about it. It was just confidence. I think that he's just been down as it relates to his confidence and he's finally getting that back and um and i just see him you know getting himself back in the mix of things as well so overall man i just thought it was a fantastic tournament and let's be clear gofan had opportunities in that final as well because there were a couple of times that he was down like i think it was when they were two all and he had federer down love 40 and he just couldn't he couldn't couldn't get that break and I think that there are just a couple of things, a couple points here and there that could have made a difference, difference even in that match. So overall, like I said, very happy for Federer. Good tournament, and uh, I just enjoyed the watch. I thought it was fantastic, man. Right, and Roger even said himself that for the better part of that first set, that Gofan was the better player. Right, he but, did make that uh, comment. That's right. You know, Federer ended up telling him to beat it and gave him that breadstick <laughs> in the uh, second set. And that was all she wrote. Right. He was like, sorry, <laughs> you look hungry. <laughs> <laughs> you do. We are still feeding people on the professional tennis tour. Yes, sir. So, so let's jump over to the other tournament, the Queen's Club tournament yeah. that was in London. And, okay, so now here's where I have to kind of face the music. I once again pick Sissi <laughs> to win this tournament. And Isaac, you once again called out that he better watch out for Felix Ajer Ali mm. And <laughs> Felix just has Stefano's number. I mean, Christ. he beat him three times in the juniors. Mm -hmm. He's beaten them both times that they've played on the professional circuit. Yes. And, um, yeah, you talk about keeping your head on a swivel. That would be season pass looking out for Felix. Listen, Bryce, when, whenever someone says, I like your game, that is a problem. <laughs> <laughs> Felix is like, I that like was... his game. Oh, I like his game. I was like, oh, no, you didn't. That threw me back to when Venus and Serena was talking about Lizzie Davenport. was like, I, we like her game. Her game is great. <laughs> That's hilarious. When he when Felix said that, that made me sit back in my seat. I said, oh. See, like, if I was Cesar Paz, hmm. I would be training for nothing more than to beat his skull out <laughs> the next time I played him. Exactly. You want to stay out there on national television that you like my game? Mm. No. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> there is something wrong with no, no, that. No, 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 no. <laughs> So that had me tickled, Bryce. I, that in itself made the tournament for me. When I heard that he's made that statement, that was awesome. But I'm going to tell you what. I am a little bit mad with my boy FAA, and I'll tell you why. Although I am okay. very happy for Feliciano Lopez, there, in my opinion, he should not have beat FAA. To me, FAA is not playing grass court tennis. There were so many opportunities for him to come to the net. He would not come to the net. And I just didn't understand that. I mean, with all that game you got, I don't know, maybe, I, I guess he just doesn't want to be exposed. Maybe he doesn't, you know, his volleys aren't good. They don't have the touch. I don't know what it is, but it just shocked me that he was unwilling to come to the net. It's like, come on, brother, get to the net. Get these points finished. But outside of that, you know, I love his game. But go ahead, man. Sorry. Well, well, ho well hopefully his coaching staff will see that as a coaching opportunity. Let's right? hope so. Yeah. Because he definitely And, and that, I was talking to somebody. Oh, I'm sorry. I was talking to someone uh, this weekend, and they were saying, you know, I'm really, he's doing well, but he's lost all of his finals. 
And my response was, look, this is his breakout year. This time last year, he was qualifying to try to get into tournaments. And most of the time, losing in the qualifying. So the fact that he's actually getting to finals is a, it's not just the next step. It's a huge leap from where he was last year. And I truly believe this time next year, he'll be winning these. I think you're right. I, I do think you're right. I just, it just, you know me, it just unnerved me because I was like, get to the net, get to the net. That's what grass court tennis is all about. And he just wouldn't do it. But, you know, still, it was a very, very, very competitive match. I mean, you can't, it was like 6'7", six, 6'3", six, 6'4". Six, so, I mean, kudos to Feliciano for getting past Felix. But that was really a great match. Enjoyed watching that one for Love sure. And, and let's take a moment to just, uh, and this was probably the, the most unfortunate moment of the tournament, and that was when one of our favorites, Del Potro, yes. um, it hurt that knee that he broke before and um, had to have surgery. And so now he's going to be out of the game again for an extended period of time and it's just a really unfortunate situation for someone who is so beloved on the tour for someone who has such a great game when you talk about players that are not considered the big four or actually right now we kind of just have the big three that can beat any one of them on any given day you don't have a lot of those players out there Del Potro is one of those and it's just unfortunate he's just had the worst luck with his body over and you know me, Bryce. You know that's one of my absolute boys that I support and follow. So when that happened, it just hurt my heart. It just broke my heart. And, you know, at the same time, you just got to pray for him and hope that it's not something so serious that it's going to keep him out long and that he can come back and hopefully make yet another, you know, come back and return to the game. But, um, yeah, definitely disappointing when, when, when we saw that happen. So. Del Potro, just get, man, get better. Get better, heal up, and we really hope to see you back on the tour very, very soon. Right, right. Now, I just want to focus now on the champion, yes. who was Feliciano Lopez. And for those of you that may not be familiar with him, he's been in the game for a minute. He's, I believe, what, 35 or 37? How old 37, is he? 37. Uh, th 37. 37. Yeah, 37 years of age. He's had, you know, some moderate success on the tour in both singles and doubles. Grand Slam champion in doubles. Um, but he, you know how sometimes you watch a tournament and you watch a player and you get that feeling like they're destined to win? Mm -hmm. That's the way I was feeling about him because with the exception of the walkover that he got over Del Potro, which is actually was very fortuitous for him because most likely Del Potro would have probably beaten him. I agree. But every other match he had was a three-set match. And he always just had enough juice at the end to pull the match out. And when you watch someone kind of proceed or progress through a tournament like that, sometimes it's just like, you know what? This is their tournament. Yeah. This is it's meant to everything be. is just lining up for them. It is absolutely meant to be. Mm -hmm. And whether he was playing, you know, um, Rayonic, who he beat, uh, Ajay Ali Asim, and uh, I was actually surprised at how close the match was with Simone because I thought that might have been the one match with his style of play that he would have taken advantage of Simone. But that ended up being a tight three-setter as well. And I don't want to count off the fact that he may have been really tired because he had to double up on some of his matches due to the weather. And he was playing doubles with the country's favorite son, Andy uh, Murray. So he, many times in this type of situation, the singles player may would pull out of the double so that they save enough energy for their singles matches. But there was no way he was going to make it out of London alive if he pulled out <laughs> of the doubles with Andy Murray. So he was forced to, to stick, stick it out. But once again, it's like everything was meant to be because not only did he win the singles, he and Andy pulled out the doubles as well. That's right. And, and let's just talk really quickly about that day that he had. So the previous day, he and Andy Murray were playing doubles. 
rain came, they couldn't get it finished, so they had to actually take that doubles match into the next day, and they were into the tiebreaker, so they had split sets. So he had to go on court, play the super tiebreaker, in which they won. He then had to leave the court, come back on, and play a singles match, which went three sets, which he ended up winning. Mm -hmm. He then left the court again, came back with Andy to play yet another doubles match, and they ended up winning that. Tell me that ain't the MVP. If you if, if you can go on court three times and get W's, I mean, I'm sorry, it's meant to be. That was phenomenal, in my opinion. Incredible. And you, and you know what was probably the best thing that came out of all this for him? Is that he was awarded a wild card into Wimbledon. Yes, yes, yes. So... You, like we were talking about Venus not too long ago about not wanting to look up and find her as your first round match. I bet you there's a whole lot of guys that got their heads on a swivel looking around to see where Lopez is going to be. <laughs> sure enough, man. He is not going to be a pleasant first round for anybody. I, I'm trying to tell you. Not I mean, at all. That was just, God, that was a phenomenal week on his part. Just incredible, Bryce. Incredible. 37. 37. It's Crazy. Exactly. <laughs> so, well, that kind of wraps up our review of the tennis from last week. Uh, Isaac, what are we looking at for this week coming up? Yeah, so we've got a couple tournaments going on. We've got two men's tournaments and a female and a women's tournament. Uh, the men's tournament, you've got Eastbourne and you've got Turkish. Eastbourne, they've got uh, Pela, I think is his last name, as the top seed. A bunch of Americans are playing. And so, you know. That's, I think it's kind of like the B squad is out. <laughs> I don't mean to be mean. <laughs> might even be the C squad. But anyway, I think that folks are just trying to tune up their games in preparation for Wimbledon. But the big folks, you know, they are taking this week to, to really rest and, and, and really kind of get their game right going into Wimbledon, which starts um, July 1st. So that tournament, nothing too spectacular. I think it will be competitive. There will be some good matches. But again, the B slash C squad. And then you've got the Turkish Open, which is uh, Benoit Paire is the top seed. Adrian Manorino is the uh, second seed. Two Frenchmen, um, again, C squad, but um, could be good stuff. Uh, definitely encourage our listeners to go and watch the uh, watch the tennis. I, I, I imagine there will be some good tennis there. Um, and But really and truly, Eastbourne on the lady side, that's the that's the big one. I mean, apparently all the women are out trying to trying to get their grass game right before Wimbledon starts. Because, I mean, that tournament, you've got folks like, you know, Sabalenka and Kerber and Sloane Stevens and Pliskova and Vincic is back in there again. Sakari, uh, Kanta, Kazakina, Wozniacki's actually uh, in there, which is nice. Uh, my girl, Danielle Collins, who is crazy. Um, so you've got a lot of big uh, names on the women's side in that tournament. Um, I think there will be some good matchups. But again, I think that they're just, their goal is to just kind of tighten their game up and make sure that it's right uh, once uh, Wimbledon begins next week. So um, any, any perspective from you, Bryce, on, on Eastbourne and or those, men turn, those uh, men's tournaments that are happening this week? Men's tournaments, I'm not even really watching because like you said, once you got to the C-Squad, I ain't got time for that. But on the women's side, yeah. you know, there are, like you said, there's some really good uh, – players in there. I'm I am gonna be particularly interested in a in a potential quarterfinal match between Kerber and Halp. Yes. That might be a little bit of a popcorn match. I'm also excited like you to see Wozniacki in the tournament considering she just got married this past weekend. That's right. Um so Serena she's on a high and, maids. Exactly, yeah, yeah. So Wozniacki potentially has a quarterfinal matchup with Kiki Burton's so that could be a popcorn match as well. And I, I just want to, for a quick second, talk about a match I watched today. Okay. And <laughs> <laughs> I'm sitting down in front of the TV just enjoying some tennis, and I watched Sloane Stevens give Ostapenko a nice breadstick in the first set. So mm -hmm. I'm thinking, okay. You know, Sloan is doing her thing. She gave her breadstick. I'm going to go back here and, I don't know, ruffle through some papers in my office. <laughs> I come back to the TV. I don't even think it was a half hour later. Ostapenko had given Sloan a bagel 
in the second set and was up 5-1 in the third. Now, Sloan did avoid getting fed in the third because she only ended up losing that th- that third set 6-3. But I once again, I have to fess up. I think I said a couple of episodes ago that I didn't think Ostapenko's grass court game was that strong. <laughs> Sloan Steve Sloan Stevens would say, "No, no, it's pretty strong to me." <laughs> <Right>. uh, <laughs> she looks pretty good on the grass. Now, here's the problem with with Ostapenko. Yeah, Ostapenko is a girl after my or a woman after my own heart, right? She she goes for her shots. Yes, and and that's a very difficult way to win seven matches in a Grand Slam. Now, she did it one time at the French Open, uh, and we. We all have kind of seen with her other results with the French Open that that's feeling a little flukish right now. <laughs> but um, <laughs> at Wimbledon, that's a tough way to win if you're not going to be able to have some consistency in your game. So although she had a really good result today, I still don't know that she's going to do a whole lot of damage in Wimbledon. But I do think she'll she'll take care of some people in the first couple of rounds. Right. So, so, so Bryce, let me let me set up something for you on that one, just because I, I just just to make sure that the you and the listeners kind of understand where where that came from. So Ostapenko actually was in the Birmingham draw last week, and she was actually up. She won the first set, and she was up on Petra Martic, five two. <laughs> she had five match points and could not convert any of them. She ended up losing that match, Bryce. Ended up losing. So get this. So then she goes down and gets fed by Sloan. And I think something just snapped. And I think she was like, you know what? <laughs> I've already lost a match that I was ahead of. I'm getting fed right now. I ain't trying to take this from nobody. Not even you, Miss Sloan Stevens. So I'm going to put them fangs on you. And that's exactly what she did. <laughs> <laughs> she did. She did. And she was going for a shot. Returns to serve everything. She didn't care. Either I'm gonna make it or I'm gonna miss it. But this point's gonna be over. There you go. And um, so yeah, anyway, honestly, I, grass, you know, that's there's the, some that's good the quarterfinal. Mindset. Yeah, go ahead. Right. So there's some good there's some good quarterfinal matchups in there that might lead to some decent semifinal matchups. But like you said, I think mainly the women this week are just trying to get some extra reps in on the grass uh, because. The big tournament starts on Monday. That's right. It's about to get started, folks. I hope you guys are ready because we are excited here. Excited. Exactly. Yeah. So one of the things we wanted to talk about today, and this is actually our hot topic since we are going into Wimbledon, we wanted to talk about England's favorite son, and that is Andy Murray, or sh- should I say Sir, Sir Andy, Murray. Andy Murray. That's right. <laughs> right. <laughs> since he was he was knighted. Um He's not playing singles. He's back. Once again, let me back up for some of our other listeners. Andy used to be one of the top four, and at one point he was the number two player in the world. He's won oh, well, Bryce, what, three let me, grand slams. Let me, let me correct that real quick. He got to number one. He actually ended the year as the number one player in the world. Remember that that fall where he went crazy and I played do. all them tournaments? I and, do. Yeah, so he got to number one. Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay, but so he got ahead. to Sorry number one. That. He's mm-hmm. won... He's won three Grand Slam titles, I believe. What, two Wimbledons and one uh, U.S.? Yes, yes. Okay. And he's also won uh, a gold medal, right, right. at yes, the Olympics. Did. B. Federer. And, yeah, and so typically you would hear people talk about the big four on the men's side, and that would be Roger Federer, Rafael Nadal, Novak Djokovic, and Andy Murray. Well, Andy has had a serious hip injury, and he had surgery, and he's been off the tour for how long, Isaac? Uh, it's it's been more, it, um, maybe about nine I, months or so, maybe a year. It was it was right. last year, yeah, when he went out though. Right. So it was big news in this tournament this week when he came back just to play doubles, and the fact that he and Lopez actually won the doubles title. So he has come out and stated, look. Physically, he doesn't think he's ready to play singles yet, so he's not going to be playing singles at Wimbledon. But he is going to be playing doubles, and he is going to be playing doubles with Hebert from France, who is one of the top doubles players in the world. 
which caused a little bit of controversy because a bear is a grand slam is a career grand slam winner in doubles with Nicholas Mahout, which means they've won all four, the Australian, the French, Wimbledon, and the U.S. Open. Not all in the same year. As a matter of fact, I think they won each one of them in a different year. But there aren't many people that can say they have a career grand slam in doubles. And so a bear who has been focusing on his singles career more so this year decided not to play with Mahout, his normal partner, and he's playing with Andy Murray, which caused a little bit of drama, right? I mean, you would, Mahout got into his feelings a little bit and was like, ah, I guess I understand, but you're supposed to be my dog, right, <laughs> you know? Right, right. What's, what's going on with that? But I think, you know, you have to understand Andy Murray, England's son, a really, really good doubles player. If you get asked by him to play, it's kind of an opportunity you don't want to pass up, right? <laughs> so he is playing doubles with him at Wimbledon. But here is where the real interesting news is. Andy also wants to play mixed doubles. And the person that he reached out to, which made sense to me, was Ash Barty. Right. And because not, she's now the number one player in the world in singles, and she's a great grass court player and she is a great doubles player. So she would have been a perfect match for him. But she said, uh, no, nah, that's all right. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> and, and to be honest with you, she said it was a very hard decision. But right now, she's doing so well in singles, and she's already committed to play women's doubles. She didn't want to try to overextend herself and play all three. So now there's been this whole push on – who is Andy Murray going to play mixed doubles with at Wimbledon? And Isaac, I think you have an opinion on who <laughs> might be a great partner for him. Oh, do I? <laughs> I mean, honestly, you cannot go, you, you just cannot do any better than the queen, Venus Williams. I'm sorry. Yes. Venus's doubles game is ridiculous. It's one of the first Grand Slam titles that she won. In fact, she helped uh, 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 Justin Gimmelstab get over the uh, finish line and get a doubles Grand Slam title. So Venus has always been spectacular. Two of them. Two, that's right. Two of them. That's right. Thank you. I mean, it's just yeah. Venus. Venus is doubles. I mean, she knows how to play the game. She's got great hands at the net. She's always had great hands at the net. I mean, you don't get that type of a record as far as being in 13 Grand Slam finals and being 13 and 0. That's what her and Serena are, folks. They are 13 and 0 in doubles. No, doubles, I Grand thought they were finals. 14. Are, do they have 14? Okay, 13, they're, 14. They're 14. I think you might be right there. Yeah. yeah. But, I mean, to be able to be undefeated in Grand Slam finals, I'm sorry. Venus Williams is most definitely the best pick from a mixed double standpoint. She doesn't have to cover it, but half of the court. I don't think that from a fatigue standpoint, it'll it'll be any hassle for her. To me, the, the choice is obvious, Bryce. It should be Venus Williams. And I'm going to add on to that, that the doubles great Mark Knowles, who is a commentator for the Tennis Channel, he stated just today, he said, Earlier, he had stated that Andy should pair up with Maria Sharapova. And he said what? today that he changed his mind. <laughs> he thought about it. He said the obvious choice is Venus Williams. And he actually predicted that there should be an announcement on that tomorrow. Now, we don't know if that's truly going to happen or not. But absolutely, you have. And let's not forget, out of all the things that you just stated about Venus, she won Wimbledon in the singles five times. That's right. So it just makes too much sense for him not to ask Venus. And can you imagine how packed the stadium will be to see Venus Williams and Andy Murray playing mixed doubles together? Oh, at incredible! At Wimbledon, incredible! It would be ins it would be insane. I mean, Hinman Hill, Murray Hill, whatever hill you want to call it. I mean, that thing would be packed. People would be all about that. So it, to me, the choice is obvious. Andy, go and do what you need to do. Reach out to Venus's people, and y'all make that thing happen. Don't you make me mad. 
<laughs> no, let's take it one step deeper. So let's say he doesn't ask Venus or he asks Venus and Venus says no. Mm-hmm. Who do you think should be the next person? Well, I mean, if, if you really want to look at, to me, I think you go by the rankings. Did he ask Kiki Mladenovic yet? Because Kiki is the number one doubles player in the world, I believe, isn't she? Probably. Yeah, no, she was number one at least a couple of weeks ago, so yeah. Yeah, I mean, to me, there's some, some, some you know, some, some people that you would want to pick just for the simple fact that they are <laughs> number one and number two in the world as relates to doubles. So to me, she would get my nod as well. But who are you thinking about, Bryce? Well, this is where I get a little, I don't know. You would think all of your top women doubles players are already committed at this point. And that would be my one argument with Kiki. I would think that Kiki is already committed to somebody. Right. Uh, heck, she might be committed to her boyfriend, Dominic Team. <laughs> you never know, right? <laughs> you know, well, he was out there asking Serena to play. Right. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I'm trying to think of other people that may not already be committed uh, to play. And, um, And I know this is this this is a little bit of me being um, partial to one of my favorites, but if you think about somebody who just might have the game to do really well with you, I would and may not already be committed. I would throw Taylor Townsend's name out there. Hmm. Interesting selection. Yeah, I think because Taylor is very good in doubles. She got that lefty swing on her. She's got all kinds of feel. Uh, I I don't I ain't mad at you for that suggestion. That's not a bad uh that's not a bad that's not a bad one. <laughs> well, one thing that we know is that we don't have to wait much longer for this decision <laughs> because they're gonna have to commit they normally come out with the uh, the mixed doubles draw within the first couple of days of the, the tournament, I think by Tuesday, right. I believe. Yeah, I think you're right. So yeah, so people are going to have to be finalizing these decisions by this weekend for sure. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. Lock them in. Get, get right. Find out who you right. want to get. <laughs> now, one more thing that I want to throw in the hot topic before we, we close this show out is as you get to know Isaac and, and, and I better, you one of the things that you will learn is that a bit of a tennis fan – you know, we both are. We're both big, huge music fans. And uh, we're probably bigger music fans than we actually are tennis <laughs> fans, to be honest with you. And this show is being recorded on Tuesday, June the 25th, 2019, which marks the 10th year of Michael Jackson's passing. And don't really care what your thoughts are about Michael Jackson, but when it comes down to song, dance, and performance, the artistry of Michael Jackson is one of the greatest that we've ever seen. And I am continually saddened by the loss of his artistry, and he has been a huge influence musically on both Isaac and myself, and I, I think you would have to say he's been a huge influence in the entire music industry on his creativity, his style, and, and literally his, his drive for perfection uh, to his craft. Isaac, I, I don't know. What else can you say about Mr. MJ? There's not much you can say, man, except the fact that it's just an incredible loss. It still stings thinking about it today. And uh, but at the same time, you have to just appreciate what he gave and what he contributed to the world, which is just phenomenal, phenomenal music. I mean, if there's anything, there's music that brings the world together. And that is something that Michael Jackson did. He brought it together. And it is just something that is near and dear, as you mentioned, to both of our hearts. So it stings. But at the same time, Mike, we miss you and we appreciate all of the good things that you left behind from a music standpoint. It just it will never, ever stop. Don't stop till you get enough, baby. (laughs) Shamon. Come on. (laughs) 
<laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Excellent. All right, Isaac, take us out. All right, folks. So once again, we thank you very much for listening to this podcast. And Bryce and I just both appreciate everything that, uh, you know, that, that, that we have and, and what we're able to give with this particular Brothers on Tennis podcast. If you want to be a part of our online family, we really, really encourage you to go and just look us up by our handle, Brothers on Tennis. Uh, we are on Instagram. We are on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, SoundCloud any of those particular media just look us up brothers on tennis that's b-r-u-t-h-a-s brothers on tennis and uh we would love to have you be a part of our family we'd love to hear from you as well if you want to send us an email go on ahead and do it um all you got to do is send it to info at brothers on tennis.com and once again brothers b-r-u-t-h-a-s so info at brothers on tennis.com So once again, folks, we just thank you for listening. We appreciate you. We hope you got some value out of this particular podcast, and we look forward to you listening to the next one. And with that, I'm your boy, Isaac. And I'm your boy, Bryce. And we are Brothers on Tennis. Thanks, everyone. Enjoy the week. And enjoy Wimbledon. Have a thriller of a day.